Let's review Nextdoor CFX Express Type A memory card. I'm Artist Right. Full disclosure, Nextdoor has sent me this memory card along with a card reader for me to do a review. All the opinions you're about to hear regarding their card are solely going to be my own. Now, to really understand where the company have come from, the best thing is to go look at the lineage. And what I understand is that this company is founded by former Sony memory engineers. So these are the people that are making memories for the Sony memory card. They actually branch off and start their own company called Next Storage. And they have been bringing a lot of really great solutions to the market. So interestingly enough, this is not just only a memory card company, but they do multiple different type of storage devices from memory card, SSD, to video equipment, to just industrial type storage. And you can see from the website right now, card reader and everything. And they have been going out to many more shows in the US. In fact, they also made, for instance, the Atom X to go into the Atomos Ninja and all these other devices too, along with their storage and portable storage devices. So they're making a lot of great strive in this industry, which is always something that I like to see. Now, what I like to do first is focus on the CF Express Type A. The reason why is because there's not that many companies that were doing these cards, although there are much more of that now and we have a lot more options. So there are a few series that you can look at their card. The one that I have to do to review this is their A1 Pro, and definitely it's not the A1 steak sauce, but anyway, it's the A1 Pro. There's a newer one, which is the A2 Pro, which is also rated at VPG, Video Performance Guarantee of 800. That's really crazy. That's a super fast card. Now, truth be told, there are no cameras out there right now that really can utilize those speed, but nonetheless, it is there, and it's using the latest CF Express. 4.0 generation. So with that one, the A2 Pro, you're going to get super read and write speed. For this one, you're not going to get quite the fast read and write speed because this is still like the Gen 2.0. And there's also another Gen 4 card too. This is the one in the yellow that has a fast read and write speed. Although this is still VPG 400, my understanding is that the sustained speed on these are not going to be quite as high, for example, as the A2 Pro. There's also like the A2 SE and also the A1 SE. So they have a lot of different models that are out there in the market. Now, the thing is that even though they have all of these, how you can get these right now is mostly through BH and there are only a few of them that you can really attain at the moment. So these are the different runs out there right now. And you can kind of get the idea for the pricing. I mean, I would say their pricing is really not bad, although there are maybe some other competitor brands that are offering, I would say, slightly better value in terms of price per storage ratio or price per gigabyte for that matter. But what's most important and what we're going to do right now is run this through the camera burst test, which is a new test I've been doing. And for this card, the A1 Pro, I'm able to put it into my Sony A7R5 format the card and run this through a long continuous burst in high speed without any slowdown whatsoever. The other thing that's really nice about this card too is once I release my finger from the shutter button, it's only buffering like one or two more frames and then pretty much it just clears out the card. There's no hiccup along the way and this is putting it through a continuous shooting of hundreds of shots at a time. Now this does not represent in any way at all a real world scenario, but what this gives you an idea and what it shows you is whether the memory card chokes up or memory card slow down or slow down your frame rate or not if you're firing rapidly. And this is something that I have been noticing using these card on a daily basis is that some of them have no problem clearing the buffer and the card doesn't slow down on camera. Some of them have a tendency to do that. This one does not have those kind of symptoms. Now, with that test out of the way, what we're gonna do next is plug this into the computer. But a few things before we do that, let's quickly talk about the card. So the construction of it overall is just simply plastic for this one. There's no like aluminum, but the heat dissipation is pretty good. They might have put in, for instance, like here might be like the aluminum piece behind there is coated in back, so it's really hard to see. But nonetheless, the card works really well. This is pretty much their card reader. There's a light indicator in the front. The way how the card goes into this card reader, as you can see right now, is a spring-loaded one. On the back, there's some regulation and a USB Type-C, 40 gigabits per second. It also comes with this nice 40 gigabits per second, 240 watt charging or power delivery capability cable too. So what we're gonna do is plug this in. I'll put the memory card in to here and we're gonna plug it into our computer. So the first test, what I am going to do with this card is run a disk speed test using Blackmagic. So we'll have it open, we're gonna start. So for this card, you can see that it's 
reading and writing about where it really needs to be right now at around 800 900 megabytes per second this is pretty much the rated speed for this card itself it's really close to that a lot of times like sometimes you'll get cards that exceed that sometimes you won't but so far this is performing fairly well in terms of write is about where we need it to be at the advertised speed let's do one more round of that so the read is supposed to be 900 or something we're only getting 700 or something it's okay i mean it's only like about 100 or 200 these are still mighty fast card although i generally like the cf express gen 4 a little bit better because you have a higher read and write speed on those now what i want to do next is this i have a test file on my computer this is a clip that i filmed with one of my cameras it is 65 gigabytes and what i want to do is just drag this on to the memory card and see how this file copying is performing right now and you can see this is pretty much the speed so it's reading from my ssd at 700 something megabytes per second so it's pretty much writing to the card at that speed pretty much this is a one-to-one -one, what you're seeing right now could it be a little bit faster yes but this is what we got out of this card the performance is good don't get me wrong and this is also vpg 400 so it can support all the sony cameras including for instance the a1 mark ii that can shoot ak at 30 frames per second without any problems it's not so much the video that i find a problem it's when i'm shooting for example raw compress or lossless compress on my sony a7r5 in rapid succession that i find those slowdowns are happening and this car doesn't slow down but this is reading at the speed that we can expect out of the car itself so it's at around like 700 something a little bit over 700 megabytes per second this is pretty much where they advertise it though, like around 900, which is perfectly fine. I've also tested other cards that advertise at 1800 or 1700. And for the continuous write like this, we're only able to get like 7, 800. That is a disappointment. So those are just some of the variables to be aware of. So sustaining, we're able to get around 700 here. I think what they listed on the card is the max speed and not the sustained speed. All right. So now that copying is done, this is on the card. What we're gonna do next is drag this file from the card and put it on our desktop or my desktop. And let's see how the speed is on that one. So on the read for this, the max read is supposed to be 900 something. We're getting around 780 megabytes per second sustained speed or 760 right now, as you can see on this card. It's really not bad. This is pretty much performing at the level that we would have expected this card to perform. So I'm perfectly okay with this. Now, what it really comes down to with these cards overall is you need to take a look at the price point for the card. There are multiple different manufacturers out there. I think Next Storage is doing something pretty good here, but I also like to see more of their lineup at BH Store as well. So that's one thing that I would love to see. So we can see there that the max write is 786. That is pretty much the speed that is reading from the card there. I mean, so far it's doing pretty good. It's not performing right at the peak that they said, but it's really up there close to the peak. You can see from the test, this A1 Pro card is doing really well. And it's also a solid contender for a CF Express Gen 2. There are a few more specs on their website that I do like to point out. They have the minimum sustained write speed listed on the site too and we're getting really close to that number on the test so this is performing as expected as far as warranty go these cards come with five year warranty they also have the durability listing for these cards however one thing that they do not list is the endurance the tbw total bit written on the card and lastly they do offer some software now there is a memory card recovery software and a memory card utility tool called npit first let's take a look at the memory card file rescue software. For this, you can use it to scan a memory card in the event that you accidentally format the card, there's data on there, or for whatever reason you need to retrieve the data from a card, this would be the utility that you can use. And this has a support for both Mac and PC, which is actually a good thing to see. However, when it comes to their memory card utility, their NPIT tool, this is currently supported on selective cards right now, as you can see. So not all the entire lineup is currently supported, but I'm sure this is gonna be something that's gonna be coming in the future. The other thing too, is that this also support their SSD. And lastly, for you to be able to use their NPIT software, again, you have to use their card reader along with their memory card in order for you to access these extra functions in the card. And this NPIT software currently right now is only in support for Windows 10, Windows 11. And it also says that performance on ARMs are not guaranteed because you are running on the Prism translation layer. But I've tested out this software and essentially what it can do is two things firmware upgrade on a card, which is something that 
it's notable considering how the cameras are getting updated nowadays. So firmware upgrade is definitely a good feature to have. The second thing that this also does is a format then restore it to factory condition. However, this app does not list the condition or the lifespan of the SSD. So that's just something to note about their software. And I hope that in the future, they will release a Mac version of this NPIT software too. So far, their cart's been pretty good. Like I said, it doesn't buffer in the camera. Everything has been functioning fine. So yeah, I would definitely give Next Storage a look especially if you're looking to add CFX REST Type A to your Sony camera arsenal, or if you're using any other memory card for that matter, they do make SD, they do make CF Express Type B as well, the bigger card that can run faster and it's also cheaper. But yeah, there are so many different options out there. I would definitely give their brand a look. If you have any questions or comments about their card, leave them in the comments section. Give this a like, subscribe, hit the bell you're new. I'm Art, I thank you for your time.